Welcome to today's daily Bible reading for July 11th. We'll begin in 1 Chronicles chapter 11, verse 1. Then all Israel gathered themselves to David unto Hebron, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. And moreover, in time past, even when Saul was king, thou wast he that leddest out and broughtest in Israel. And the Lord thy God said unto thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be ruler over my people Israel. Therefore came all the elders of Israel to the king to Hebron. And David made a covenant with them in Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel, according to the word of the Lord by Samuel. And David and all Israel went to Jerusalem, which is Jebus, where the Jebusites were, the inhabitants of the land. And the inhabitants of Jebus said to David, Thou shalt not come hither. Nevertheless, David took the castle of Zion, which is the city of David. And David said, Whosoever smiteth the Jebusites first shall be chief and captain. So Joab, the son of Zeruah, went first up and was chief. And David dwelt in the castle, therefore they called it the city of David. And he built the city round about, even from Millo round about, and Joab repaired the rest of the city. So David waxed greater and greater, for the Lord of hosts was with him. These also are the chief of the mighty men whom David had, who strengthened themselves with him in his kingdom and with all Israel, to make him king, according to the word of the Lord concerning Israel. And this is the number of the mighty men whom David had, Jash Jashobim, a Hakamite, the chief of the captains. He lifted up his spear against three hundred slain by him at one time. And after him was Eliezer, the son of Dodo, the Ahohite, who was one of the three mighties. He was with David at past Amin, and there the Philistines were gathered together to battle, where was a parcel of ground full of barley, and the people fled from before the Philistines, and they set themselves in the midst of that parcel, and delivered it, and slew the Philistines, and the Lord saved them by a great deliverance. Now three of the mighty, three of the thirty captains went down to the rock to David, into the cave of Adullam, and the host of the Philistines encamped in the valley of Rephim. And David was then in the hold, and the Philistines' garrison was then at Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, that is at the gate. And the three break through the host of the Philistines, and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem, that was by the gate, and took it, and brought it to David. But David would not drink of it, but poured it out to the Lord, and said, My God forbid it me that I should do this thing. Shall I drink the blood of these men that have put their lives in jeopardy? For with the jeopardy of their lives they brought it. Therefore he would not drink it. These things did these three mightiest. And Abishai the brother of Joab, he was chief of the three, for lifting up his spear against three hundred. He slew them and had a name among the three. Of the three, he was more honorable than the two, for he was their captain, howbeit he attained not to the first three. Then Aniah the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kabzeel, who had done many acts, he slew two lion-like men of Moab. Also he went down and slew a lion in a pit in a snowy day. And he slew an Egyptian, a man of great stature, five cubits high. And in the Egyptian's hand was a spear like a weaver's beam. And he went down to him with a staff, and plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand, and slew him with his own spear. And these things did Benaniah the son of Jehoiada, and had the name among the three mighties. Behold, he was honorable among the thirty, but attained not to the first three, and David set him over his guard. Also the valiant men of the armies were Eshael, the brother of Joab, Elhanan, the son of Dodo of Bethlehem, Shamath, the Herorite, Helaz, the Pelonite, Ira, the son of Akesh, the Tekoit, Abiezer, the Anthonite, 
Sibakai the Hushathite, Eli the Ahohite, Mahari the Netapherphite, Helid the son of Banna, the Netapherthite, Ethani the son of Rabbi of Gibeah, that pertained to the children of Benjamin, Benaniah the Parathonite, Huri of the brooks of Gash, Abiel of the Abarathite, Asmaveth the Bahumite, Elahaba the Shalbanite, the sons of Hashem the Gizanite, Jonathan the son of Shag the Hararite, Ahiam the son of Sacher the Hararite, Eliphil the son of Ur, Hefer the son of Merkurathite, Ahijah the Pelonite, Hezro the Carmelite, Nari the son of Isbai, Joel the brother of Nathan, Mibhar the son of Hagarai, Zelik the Ammonite, Nahari the Betharite, the armor bearer of Joab the son of Zeruah, Ira the Ithrite, Gerab the Ithrite, Uriah the Hittite, Zabad the son of Ali, Adina the son of Sheza the Reubenite, a captain of the Reubenites, and thirty with him, Hanan the son of Maka, and Joshaphat the Mithnite. Uzziah the Ashtharite, Shema and Jehiel the sons of Hothan the Ararite, Jediel the son of Shimri, and Joha his brother the Tizite, Eliel the Mehavite, and Jerabi and Joshava the sons of Elnam, and Ithma the Moabite, Eliel and Obed, and Jaseel the Mesobate. Now these are they that came to David to Ziklag, while he yet kept himself close because of Saul the son of Kish. And they were among the mighty men, helpers of the war. They were armed with bows, and could use both the right hand and the left in hurling stones and shooting arrows out of a bow, even of Saul's brethren of Benjamin. The chief was Ahizer, then Joash, the sons of Shema the Gibbethite, and Jezeel and Pellet, the sons of At of Asmaveth, and Barakah, and Jehu the Anthonite, and Asmaeah the Gibeonite, a mighty man among the thirty, and over the thirty, and Jeremiah and Jehaziel, and Johanan and Josabad the Gerathathite, Eluzai and Jeremoth, and Beliah, and Sheremiah, and Shepathiah, and the Harophite. Elkanah and Jeseah and Azrael and Jozer and Jashabim the Korhites, and Jola and Zebediah the sons of Jehoram of Geder, and of the Gadites there separated themselves unto David, into the hold to the wilderness men of might and men of war fit for the battle, that could handle shield and buckler, whose faces were like the faces of lions and were as swift as the rose upon the mountains. Ezer the first, Obadiah the second, Eliab the third, Mishmana the fourth, Jeremiah the fifth, Atai the sixth, Eliel the seventh, Johanan the eighth, Elzabad the ninth, Jeremiah the tenth, Machbani the eleventh. These were of the sons of Gad, captains of the host. One of the least was over a hundred, and the greatest over a thousand. These are they that went over Jordan in the first month, when it had overflown all its banks. And they put to flight all them of the valleys, both toward the east and toward the west. And there came of the children of Benjamin and Judah to the hold unto David. And David went out to meet them, and answered and said unto them, If ye be come peaceably unto me to help me, mine heart shall be knit unto you. But if ye be come to betray me to mine enemies, seeing there is no wrong in mine hands, the God of our fathers look thereon and rebuke it. Then the Spirit came upon Amasai, who was chief of the captains, and he said, Thine are we, David, and on thy side, thou son of Jesse, peace, peace be unto thee, and peace be to thine helpers, for thy God helpeth thee. Then David received them, and made them captains of the band. And now we'll go to Acts, chapter 28, verse 1. 
And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita, and the barbarous people showed us no little kindness. For they kindled a fire and received us every one, because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom, though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance, vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. In the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, others also, which had diseases in the island, came and were healed, who also honored us with many honors, and when we departed, they laded us with such things as were necessary. And after three months we departed in a ship of Alexandria, which had wintered in the isle, whose sign was Castor and Pollux. And landing at Syracuse, we tarried there three days. And from thence we fetched a compass, and came to Regium, and after one day the south wind blew, and we came the next day to Petulio, where we found brethren, and were desired to tarry with them seven days, and so we went toward Rome. And from thence, when the brethren heard of us, they came to meet us as far as a pie forum, and the three taverns, whom, when Paul saw, he thanked God and took courage. And when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard. But Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with a soldier that kept him. And it came to pass that after three days Paul called the chief of the Jews together. And when they were come together, he said unto them, Men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans who, when they had examined me, would have let me go, because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spake against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar, not that I had aught to accuse my nation of. For this cause, therefore, have I called for you, to see you, and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. And they said unto him, We neither received letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came showed or spake any harm of thee. But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest, for as concerning this sect, we know that everywhere is spoken against it. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed, after that Paul had spoken one word, Well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people, and say, Hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. For the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed, and had great reasoning among themselves. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house, and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God, and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ, with all confidence, no man forbidding him. Now we'll go to Psalm.
chapter 9, verse 1. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. When mine enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. For thou hast maintained my right and my cause. Thou saddest in the throne, judging right. Thou hast rebuked the heathen. Thou hast destroyed the wicked. Thou hast put out their name forever and ever. O thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end. And thou hast destroyed cities. Their memorial has perished with them. But the Lord shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment, and he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Sing praises to the Lord which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. When he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them. He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. We'll go Proverbs chapter 19, verse 1 through 3. Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. Also that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. And he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. The foolishness of man perverteth his way, and his heart fretteth against the Lord.